Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well today. My name is Alina and in today's video, I wanted to discuss selling online. This is going to be a two-part video. In this first part, I wanna give you a background story of my selling experience because I've been selling online since 2013. I want to talk about the different apps I use, which ones I like better than others, and the pros and cons between all the different apps. So if you're interested in taking the stuff you have at home and trying to make a few extra bucks by selling them online, then I hope this video will be beneficial for you and keep on watching. I didn't start selling things online for money purposes. I started selling things online because of my spending habits. <laughs> so I love to purchase new things and as soon as I wear them one, two, maybe some of my favorite items three, four times, I get sick of it and I want something new. I don't want to wear it anymore. The goal isn't to make the most money and the most profit. I just feel like when I'm giving them away to a donation center, I don't know where they're going. And the feeling of somebody buying something, even if it's just for $5, feels so good that I know that it's going to somebody who decided they wanted to spend money on one of my items. And there's something about that feeling that just urges me to continue to put up my stuff online and keep that cycle going. It's to pass on that item to someone else who will also love it and get the same joy of wearing it and styling it like I had if I even wore that item. A lot of the items I sell still have tags on them and maybe I just never got a chance to wear them and I'm past that style now. I'm not into it anymore. So that is why I sell online. For that same reason, I want to make the selling process as easy as possible. I don't want it to take so much of my time. So that's that. My first item was sold in September of 2013 on Poshmark. And from that point, I started to list more and more items and I got really into Poshmark at that time. But one day I was scrolling on Poshmark and I saw a seller that was selling Michael Kors bags, wallets, accessories. They were all authentic, they were new with tags, and they were at a discounted price. In high school, Michael Kors was one of the IT brands. And so I saw this girl selling Michael Kors items and she had a large variety of them. And I was thinking, gosh, how was she selling these items online and flipping them? I took a chance and I emailed her and I asked her, I was like, hey, I'm new to Poshmark and I've noticed that you have all these Michael Kors items and they're all new with tags, they're all authentic and you're selling them. And I was wondering, you know, if you can kind of teach me about this process. I'm so glad that I took the chance and messaged her because she had some connection uh, with the Michael Kors warehouse and was able to get those items at a discounted price. From that point, I had asked her if I could purchase some of those items and resell them as well. And she would be making profit by me purchasing it from her. And then I would be making profit by selling it online. And she agreed. Now, I was a teenager, so I don't really know the logistics of the whole situation, but it was so invigorating and exciting because I bought in bulk these brand new Michael Kors items and I started to sell them online. And as I started to sell them, I ended up doing really well. I was making a lot of money flipping these Michael Kors items and I loved the feeling of selling them, of buying them and then reselling them. And profit wasn't a lot, but it was definitely enough for me as a teenager to feel super excited that I was making some side money while I'm you know, in high school. I decided to expand my reach and start an Instagram account specifically for Michael Kors items and I called it something like Michael Kors for less. 
as soon as I started on Instagram, people started to message me. People were sending me money through PayPal. I was sending them their Michael Kors items. And again, it started to rise up and up as I was reselling these Michael Kors things. And I felt I was getting a lot of growth at that time, especially because the way I was presenting it, I was really good with customer service. I was taking good photos. Everything was awesome. At one point, I was selling so much more through Instagram than I was selling on Poshmark, especially because on Instagram, there was no fee that was taken for me to sell. And from Poshmark, they do take a fee. So I end up making even less. Poshmark was put to the side and Instagram became my main focus. Then one sad, tragic day, I try to log into the Instagram account and I can't log in. I look for the Instagram account and it's no longer there. And I don't know what happened. I, uh, maybe somebody had reported me. Maybe I wasn't allowed to do what I was doing. I had no idea. Again, I'm still in high school. I don't really know what happened, but the Instagram got shut down. Now, I was friends with this girl on my personal Instagram as well. And I started to do a little snooping and noticed that she also made an Instagram account to sell the Michael Kors items. And it was called something similar to the name that I had given it, like Michael Kors for less. It was called something similar. And I don't know, she may have been the one that had reported me or blocked me. What do you do, right? So at that point, I got really discouraged because all the time and effort that I had put in, as all of this was happening, she was not offering me that many things to purchase and was kind of slowly losing connections with me. Which I'm not able to tell what really happened. As time went by, I continued to list my own stuff on Poshmark and things would sell here and there super randomly. It wasn't like every single day I was getting sales, but some days I would get two or three sales. Other days, weeks, I would get nothing. So it's very scattered. Needless to say, I do have a lot of experience with selling online, but I never took it as seriously as I did with that Michael Kors aspect of it. That being said, let's talk about some useful information for you. Now, currently, whenever I have free time, I will list some of my own items up for sale. The main apps that I use are Poshmark, Vinted, and Mercari. I list on all of those apps because there's a higher chance that from one of those apps, my items will be sold. So now I want to review some of these apps. First, let's start with Poshmark. Poshmark is one of the most popular apps. The pros of Poshmark. One pro is that you get to copy your listing. When I post something online, it becomes on the top of the list when you search. So if I post Victoria's Secret leggings. As soon as I post that listing, it is on top when you search for Victoria's Secret leggings. But then as time goes by, the post keeps falling lower and lower and becomes more and more difficult to see when you're searching for Victoria's Secret leggings. And at that point, you want to repost the listing. So it again refreshes and comes to the top of the list. The benefits of Poshmark is you can copy the whole listing, all of the description, all of everything that you've put in, all of the photos can be copied and a duplicate is made and you can repost that duplicate and it becomes on the top so you don't have to retake photos or save the photos and have them saved on your phone. You don't have to rewrite the description. You just duplicate the listing and post. And that is so convenient. I love that feature. It's very easy to use and gives you a higher chance of your listing being seen. Another pro of Poshmark. The fact that you can share your listings on Poshmark is a really big plus, and I'll explain why. So you have your Poshmark closet. And when you share your listing, the listing comes to the top of your closet. And what's cool about that is you can organize your closet however you want. You can put all your dresses together. You can put all the things that are sold to the bottom. If you decide you have a different aesthetic that you're using, you can change the aesthetic. If you really want certain items to pop out or be the first things that are seen in your closet, again, you can share them to either your followers or 
or one of the events that they have and it takes it to the top of your closet. That's really nice compared to the other apps where when you list that item, it's always going to be in that same position. Also, since Poshmark is one of the most popular and larger apps, you do have a higher chance of selling things on there. I like that you can make the item not available to purchase. And the reason I like that is because if I sell something on Vinted or on Macari, what I'll do is I'll mark the item on Poshmark as sold and not available to purchase. And I'll add it to my history of the items that I've listed and have sold. What's nice is that first that gives me more credibility as a seller. And it also shows all the different items that I have because if I sell something on Poshmark, for example, then I have to delete it from Macari and from Vinted. And so there's no proof that I've ever even had that item up. Another pro that maybe some people may view as a con, but I think it's a pro of Poshmark, is the fact that they have just regular standard shipping. So I don't have to select this package is under one pound, this package is one to two pounds, this package is more than three pounds, and change the shipping price according to the weight they give you an automatic prepaid label and you just use that label for whatever the item is the reason that's a pro is because you don't make mistakes on the other selling accounts if you select the wrong shipping label and your weight is off then you might have to pay out of pocket to cover some of the shipping costs and it's an extra step for me as a seller to have to worry about how much something weighs. So it is more convenient for the seller in that aspect. You can offer discounted shipping. The biggest con of Poshmark is their fee. They take the highest seller fee out of all the apps that I list on. So for example, if I list an item for $10, in Poshmark, you'll end up getting $7 profit. On Mercari, you'll end up getting $8.41. And on Vinted, you get the full $10. So they don't take any seller fee. That is one of the largest negatives of selling on Poshmark. And it's bad for the buyer as well. For example, I'm trying to sell one of my Prada bags and I'm selling it on Poshmark for 600, and the profit I'm getting is 480. On Mercari, I have it listed for the same price, and I'm getting 517. And on Vinted, I get the full $600. So what happens is on Vinted, I'm able to list my items for less, and that's better for the buyer. Even on Macari, I can list it for less, but on Poshmark, I have to up my prices so that I get some type of profit that I find worth it to me. Like for example, for the Prada bag, I really don't wanna lose too much money because it's in the same condition that I had purchased it. For that reason, I have a certain minimum price. But for the buyer, it's $600. It's so much more expensive than really I would be happy if it sold for $500. But that's how much it sells if I list it for $600 on Poshmark. So you can see why that becomes an issue, especially if you're selling higher price items. So let's move on now to Mercari. Macari is very nice because you can list a larger array of items on there. You can even list some household products and electronics, where on Poshmark you can't do that. Macari also does have a promote option. So like I mentioned with Poshmark, where you can share your listings and it'll put it to the top of your closet. Macari has a similar service, although not as great, and I'll explain why. So on Mercari, you have the option to promote the item, but if you promote it, you have to reduce the price at least by 5% of any historical price that you've ever listed that item at. So although you can promote it and bring it to the top of the search, it does require you to adjust the price of the listing. So that's not always the best. Otherwise, I already mentioned that you do get more money when you sell on Mercari compared to Poshmark. So that is one of their biggest pluses. And for some people, this might be a pro or maybe a con, but I really like that you can leave reviews on Mercari and those reviews are visible. So when people go on my account, they can see the reviews that they have left. 
You can leave reviews on Poshmark as well, but they're not visible to everybody. They're only visible to you. Where on Macari and Vinted, they're visible to everybody. So if you are a good, honest seller, then you have good reviews and that makes people more comfortable and confident purchasing from you. But that gives you a lot of credibility on your account. And I do find that I sell a lot of things on Mercari compared to the other two apps and I'm happy with the price that they're sold for. Another pro of Mercari is their chat. Same with Vinted. Both Vinted and Mercari have a chat option. So I can send a message to a person that's interested or a person that had just purchased. And it's nice because we have that private communication where on Poshmark, I can only send a message by leaving a comment and I would have to tag the person in the comment so that they see what I had written. Another benefit of Mercari and Vinted is the communication that you have with your yours buyers. Now, Vinted is definitely my favorite app to sell on, but it's the app that I sell the least amount on because there is a fee that the buyer has to pay and not a lot of people like to shop on Vinted, as I have noticed, but it is one of my favorite places to sell. So when I sell something on Vinted, it is cha-ching. <laughs> That's because, like I had mentioned, Vinted gives you all the profits of your listing. So if I list something for $500, I'll get $500. There's a lot more negotiation and a lot lower prices that I can list my items for on Vinted, which is a total huge plus. I'd love to give people deals and also feel that I'm getting a fair price for what I'm selling. One thing I don't love about Vinted is the way that your closet appears to the buyer. On Poshmark and Macari, everything is a square, but on Vinted, it's more of a rectangle. And that means that items can be cut out a little bit or cut off depending on the way that I take the photo. So it's a bit more difficult when I'm listing the item on Poshmark and Macari and they look really great and the whole item is in the frame. And then I have to have a separate type of picture format and picture size for Vinted. So that is a little bit of a negative and a bit more work that needs to be done. Now, there's a lot of other pros and cons and little things that can be looked out for, but I want to leave this video generalized to some of the most important details that I find that may help you choose which app is best for you. Again, I do suggest just listing on all of the apps in general. If there are any specific questions that you have, you can list it below in the comments for me and I'll try to get back to you about some of my experiences with the different apps. Before I end this video, there there are a few more apps that are worth mentioning. First, I'm getting more familiar with Depop. It is another selling app. And Depop styles themselves very similar to Instagram, and I'm still getting to know the platform. The one negative I've noticed about Depop is the fact that you can only list four photos but you can list videos as well. But listing only four photos is too little. Some of the other places you can sell. ThreadUp, what I do understand about ThreadUp is that you send your items there, they list it for you, so they take all the photos, they do the listings, and then when it sells, you, you, know, you get the profit. I'm sure there's some fee that they take as well for all the work that they're doing. And maybe I'll explore that a little bit more, but also another option. Nextdoor, if you've never heard of Nextdoor, it's like this neighborhood app. So it's a very local app, but what's nice is you can sell some stuff on there because there is a for sale section and similar to Craigslist. Craigslist, you have your local Craigslist and you can list items on there. I don't usually list my clothes on there, but I do list items like jewelry or electronics and they sell really well on those types of apps. But clothing specifically, I stick to Poshmark, Vinted, Macari, and now a little bit of Depop. OfferUp is excellent. There used to be an app called LetGo, and now LetGo and OfferUp are joined together. OfferUp does offer shipping and they offer uh, local purchases as well. You can put up clothes because you can ship them, which is nice. But again, another place that I like to sell more miscellaneous items apart from clothing. It's another really great seller's app, so I had to mention it in this video. 
and then Facebook Marketplace. I just recently got into Facebook Marketplace and things sell really well on there. Um, I've sold a few books on there. I've also sold a few electronics and there's very high demand. Like I was selling earphones. There was a super high demand for earphones on there. So another great listing Place. Again, not for clothes specifically, although you can list clothes on there. I have sold some of my nursing scrubs on there, but Facebook Marketplace is lovely for other miscellaneous items. That was a more general review about all the different selling apps that I've had experiences with. I hope this was a helpful and educational video for you. There are certain gem pieces that you can find by purchasing from someone else's closet, things that you would never find in the stores and they could mean a lot have a lot of value even some might be investments and vintage items that can increase in price over time so it's always lovely to shop on the sec these secondhand stores now a little tidbit about reselling because I work full-time as a registered nurse and then I'm also working here on my YouTube channel I don't have a chance to do a side hustle of buying and reselling, although I think it is so cool to do. Such a great way to make extra income. There are people who are doing it part-time, people who are doing it full-time. There's a lot of brands that you need to study so you know what to buy, but there is so much potential in reselling and it might be something that I may explore in the future. So if you're interested in seeing the video where I'm listing an item, that will be coming soon and if i've already made it i'm going to link it in this video thank you so much for watching i do hope i gave you some knowledge and education people always ask me where do i list my items where can i sell my stuff i've sold things for my family and my, my friends and i thought it would be a good video for me to share my experiences and my story about it I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day. Thank you again for watching. Please do like and subscribe. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you in my next one. Bye.